Hey guys, so I am back with you as promised. I tried out module two of Ian Fennelly's Urban Sketching for Beginners course. So in module two, he does a sketch of some buildings still in Shrewsbury in England. And it's of mainly of the Tanner's Wine Merchants, which are the kind of uh, would be in buildings kind of in the foreground of this photograph that you can see right now. So this is the actual scene that he's sketching. And yeah, I felt like <laughs> I went into this a bit more prepared than last time about like how intense it was going to be trying to follow along with him. Of course, that's of my own making because you can press pause, you can rewind. But I really wanted to try and do this as close to <laughs> Ian's speed as possible. And also bearing in mind, my, the paper I'm using is probably about half the size of what Ian's using. I'm using A4 paper here and he is using A3, I believe. So that's double the size. I do wish I had some nice uh, hot press paper to do these exercises on, but c'est la vie. I've got this Canson pad, which is cheap and cheerful. It's not got too much texture to it, so that's good. But I don't think the paint behaves on it as nicely as perhaps Ian's Fabriano posh pad, <laughs> let's say. Maybe I'd have a better time if I tried this out on some different paper. But anyway, that's by the by. For those of you who are watching this video and you haven't seen the last one, I did module one uh, a few weeks ago, so I'll link that video in the corner above and I give you a little explanation, brief explanation of who Ian Fennelly is and what this course is about. So you can go and check that out in that video, but I'm sure if you've clicked on this, you're probably aware of who Ian Fennelly is anyway. And um, this is one of his newer courses, but he's got absolutely loads of them on the, on his his platform, which is urbansketchcourse.com. So you can go over there and have a look. He's got loads of fun ones. I just want to take all of them, but I'm a bit of a course junkie, to be honest, guys. I just I'm just I just love taking all the courses. <laughs> but then hopefully that's helpful for you guys because I can sort of show you what they're like a little bit. You know, sometimes that's helpful um, to help you decide which one is right for you or which one you want to spend your money on first, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I've been a fan for Ian, of Ian Fennelly right from the start of me getting into urban sketching, really. So right back in, I don't know, something like 2012, 13, 14, somewhere around that it gets a bit blurry as soon as you go past last year. <laughs> Even yesterday's a bit blurry, but yeah, so somewhere around that that time, I think I just must have discovered him on, it was Instagram even a thing then? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Instagram, maybe Pinterest, something like that. Obviously, his style is just so unique and crazy and wonderful and colourful. And you just sat there looking at it like, Jeez, this is like something from Alice in Wonderland and I just want to know how he does this, you know. And even watching him, many lessons from him and stuff like that and him showing you exactly step by step, it's like there's still magic. There's still some voodoo involved in that. I'm pretty sure there's some voodoo involved. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, so I'm doing the pencil sketch and I'm doing my best to follow along with Ian and... I'm quite happy with how I've got the composition this time. At the last time for module one with the English bridge, I got the proportions a bit wrong and the bridge was a bit too high up on the page and I couldn't fit the lamppost in. It's not a train smash because I managed to uh, make it work anyway. Well, to my, what was okay to me, you know, I made it work. I tried to pay a bit more attention to where things were on the page this time. But, you know, I still don't have the proportions that make Ian's sketch Ian's um, and some of his jaunty kind of exaggerated angles and whatnot. I'll tell you what actually guys, I was invited to do a live workshop with Ian and we sketched something from a small town outside Liverpool. The name escapes me right now but it's really cool. It's got more of these like buildings with the exposed timber frames. That is a lesson in endurance because it was like three and a half hours and like you're trying to sketch along with him at the same time so that was quite fun. So I feel like I've had a bit of intense training now. So following along with him in this course where I can just press pause is uh, much, much easier because <laughs> I've gone to the other extreme. 
So anyway, so yeah, I've done all the pencil sketch and then I'm just grabbing my fine liners. Ian explains which size he's using and at which point, you know, he's got a whole bunch of fine liners. But to be honest, I sort of just went with what I felt like. And, you know, whether you're using a 0.2 or a 0.3, it's kind of like whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. Well, to me, I was more focused on just trying to get like a, a good sketch, a good drawing. And I was just really trying to see where he was thickening his lines, like squinting as I was going along and just trying to see, because I feel that it's quite a distinctive part of his style is like where he adds like really thick, dark black areas and that can really make certain bits pop and stuff like that. That's what I really want to get into. I know this is labelled as a beginner's course, but I feel like you can take what you need from the course. So, you know, maybe I'm less panicky about like proportions and perspective but actually I'm trying to focus on where, where does he thicken his lines and why does he do that and what's you know which areas and how is he creating balance through doing that and then later on like where is he adding certain colors and like why is he doing that trying to focus on those things a bit more which are the things that are just completely baffle me about his style so yeah, I'm just speeding this up, guys, because I mean, the point of this is not really for you to watch me draw it step by step. But I just wanted to show you how I'm progressing sort of through the course and show you this module. And I think I'm doing a reasonable job at keeping up with him. Obviously, I'm pressing pause and then I'm drawing a bit and then watching what he draws next and then drawing that. Overall, when I put this footage in uh, to, to edit it, it was two hours. I don't think that's too bad. Uh, I actually did it over two days, though, because I got, you know, life stuff anyway. All in all, it took two hours, which for an Ian Fennelly style sketch isn't too bad either, because I think he usually does, it does take him like two to three hours for each of his sketches, which is cool. You know, I like that there's someone out there that's doing like more detailed sketch and spends two to three hours and he'll do that on location as well. Whereas, you know, lots of other urban sketchers like to just do quick kind of half hour to an hour sketches and just get an impression of a place and then move on and do something else. So both both ways are completely valid, but I think it is I think there's a lot of people doing maybe the quicker stuff and the looser stuff and it's quite nice just to actually see Ian do something a bit more detailed and you know just focus on one scene and actually make it like a piece of art, you know, rather than just a quick impression. So that's that's quite cool. It's just a different different angle. And for someone like me who I struggle with being quick and getting loads of things drawn if I'm like wandering around urban sketching, travel sketching, I'm kind of like better at just doing one long drawing and that kind of is just, that's just natural for me. I am trying to train myself to try other methods of sketching and try other processes and stuff like that because I'm all about the experimentation as you guys know. But yeah, it's... I don't, feel, <laughs> I don't feel so bad because it's like, oh, okay, someone else spends like two to three hours on one sketch. Okay, yeah. I mean, not that my sketches look anything like Ian's, but, you know, I quite like just sitting and spending two hours on a sketch. And most recently with Urban Sketches Johannesburg, you know, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing one sketch and I spend two, two and a half hours on it. Actually, most recently, I've had two parters because we keep going back to the same place. So I know that I can sketch the same thing again. So I've been doing them across sketchbook spreads and I've on the one uh, session, I've managed to do all the line work and stuff. And then on the second session, I actually managed to paint it. So, yeah, so that's probably more like four to five hours. <laughs> It's good to have a variety, I think, in your sketchbook of like long sketches and short sketches and, you know, it kind of keeps things dynamic and it's good to challenge yourself as well to like do quick sketches as well. And by quick, I mean, I don't think I can get anything useful done in half an hour, but like maybe an hour or something. But everyone's different. You know, I think of Liz Steele and she's like super quick. She's, she's speedy, speedy sketcher. But then she has an entirely different style and you can sort of see that come through you know it's it all goes hand in hand she wouldn't be able to draw something like this at her speed but this is not her style but that's what I'm uh, enjoying about uh, what we're doing on Patreon this month we're doing paint first draw later so we're putting splodges of paint down 
capturing some shapes and then drawing on top and developing the sketch from there and that's actually been really fun and I've been taking that style out uh, urban sketching with me as well producing little sketch vlogs for for the patreons over there so if you guys are interested in seeing all of that stuff I release a video a week uh, to do with our theme of the month February is paint first draw later January was all about perspective and yeah, one video a week with a little sketch challenge and it's really fun. So yeah, do go check that out if you get a chance. I really like Ian's approach to lettering. He doesn't try to copy what's there, which could really drive you crazy or take you ages. He just does his own style of lettering because it still says the same thing. And I, I quite like that. That also saves a bit of time, I feel. Okay, so there was two stages of pen work in the module. So I, we've been through all of those and now we're moving on to watercolour. And just like the last module, I don't have the same colours as Ian has. So or I used my sketchbook with the swatches in just to sort of see which colours I could use as a replacement. Ian's using magnesium, manganese, brown, manganese, magnesium, one of them. And I don't have that, so instead I was going to use this Raw Sienna by Winsor & Newton that I have. But then I kind of looked at Ian's swatch again and I thought, ah, his is just a bit more intense, a bit more orangey, a bit more vibrant. And I was like, well, I can't use my yellow ochre in my Winsor & Newton set because it's basically finished, it's just empty. But then I went to get my Cotman set because Ian uses white in his demos as well, which... I do have in this little Windsor & Newton Cotman set and in there is a yellow ochre so I decided I swatched the yellow ochre and I decided to use that instead because it was a bit more vibrant and then I do have French ultramarine and I didn't have alizarin alizarin god I can't say words today alizarin crimson so again I just sort of looked at my swatches and just tried to pick something that was close as possible and I decided on this Windsor & Newton permanent carmine that's fine use what use what you have you know if you've seen the first video of this i guess it's a series now because there's two um, if you've seen the the video about module one you'll remember me saying the the idea really is not to carbon copy ian fennelly although that is again exactly what i am trying to do here but by copying what he's showing it is teaching me a lot about the things i mentioned earlier where does he put his thicker lines where does he put pockets of black to bring out the contrast where is he putting certain colors listening to him talk about his thought process whilst he's sketching about why he's picking certain colors it's just invaluable you know it's, it's really awesome to listen to an urban sketcher or an artist like ian fennelly who's just so different um talk about his thought process whilst he's doing it i mean i just think that's amazing so i was really happy with that and also, I, you know, he shows his pencil sketch that he did at the very start of this module. He did the pencil sketch on location. He does a tonal study. And you can see that actually that's where his colour decisions sometimes come from. Is So you can see that building right in the kind of disappearing off into down the road there, that bright red and blue one. In his pencil sketch, in the tonal sketch, that's really, really dark. So it almost doesn't mat matter what colours he's using there, but whatever they are, they must be really dark. And I found that really interesting. I also found, I'm only just thinking about this now whilst I'm looking at this. I also find it quite interesting that he has got his really dark colours like going off into the distance or the road. I mean, I suppose it's not massively in the distance, but I guess there was just lots of shadow and stuff there. But he's use, he uses quite f like some fainter colours in the foreground, and I think that's quite interesting. I think maybe the, the stronger colours kind of draw you into the picture and like make your eye move down the street. Maybe that's that's how that works too. Yeah, as you can see, I'm just going around now and adding the final layer of pen, which is going over the top. I'm actually, I didn't have a roller pen as such, but I'm using this weird like Pentel pen that, I don't know, doesn't even seem to have a nib. I think it's called an Air or something. A Uniball Air. And it's really strange. It just doesn't really have a nib. I don't know how it works. It's very strange. Anyway, um, so I've got one of those and it's not waterproof, but Ian said, you know, it doesn't matter, but it really helps using a like maybe rollerball based pen in some areas where you're doing the dark black because it doesn't ruin, it can go over the surface of the paint. It's a bit more hard wearing. These fine liners, uh, they, they're, they're felt kind of tip nib things. 
can wear out quite quickly and especially if you're working on cold pressed paper because it's obviously textured so I bought a 0.1 Derwent line maker it's the first time I tried that fine liner um, whilst I was on my honeymoon in November and it's already kind of given up the ghost and I'm um, yeah I think it's the nib has just worn so much um, but I have used it a lot to be fair but I think that is the quickest a pen has kind of worn out on me here I'm using a 0.05 and um, Ian doesn't necessarily use one of these in his demo, although I think in general use he does use one, but um, I guess maybe because I'm using a smaller paper I just needed like that finer line, so I'm using a 0.05 here. And I've, any brand of 0.05, those nibs do tend to wear out quite quickly because they're just so fine. So I'm just trying to get in some of the hatching that he does I'm not particularly good at it I can't get it as nice as he seems to get it I obviously he's got years of practice on me <laughs> I just need to practice a bit more I like the effect though I'm not sure what I was doing with that brick wall at the bottom of Tanner's wine merchants I mean that was a bit tricky because uh, it was kind of added in at the stage that I drew it you know Ian added it in and I was like oh I think that knocked off my uh, my perspective a little bit, but it's not too bad. And then over on the left-hand side, that building, I haven't got it the same as what Ian's done or what's in the picture, but I've just drawn it to... It still does the job, you know. It still kind of brings that building in and, and gives the sense of a building in the foreground and the buildings on the right disappearing down the road. So, you know, it still does the job. But this is what I was talking about, like squint, I'm squinting my eyes at what Ian's doing, just trying to see where he's really getting in those dark areas so I can make sure that I'm kind of at least matching him tonally, even if the colours or the details aren't quite right. It's really definitely taught me a lot about tone and how important just lights and darks are versus actual colours and things like that. So yeah, that's that's been a big learning point for me so far in this course. I think this could be quite overwhelming if you are like absolute beginner. So, you know, don't don't beat yourself up if you do have this course and you're finding it really difficult because it is it is tricky and especially at the speed Ian goes at. But that's why you've got the luxury of like pausing and rewinding and that kind of thing. But it, it can be quite overwhelming. And I was a bit scared about <laughs> about this picture because the English bridge is just like it was like a bridge, you know, so it didn't seem too bad. But this one, I looked at it and I looked at all the details and I was like, oh, God, OK, here we go. But actually, I feel like I found this one easier. And I don't know if it's because there's just more details, there's more things to hang your drawing on almost. It just felt, I don't know, just felt a bit easier in some ways, but not easy, just easier <laughs> than the last module. And also, I just knew what to expect a bit more. I was kind of like, I psyched myself up and I was like, right, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> So Ian's just released a, I should have mentioned this earlier, Ian has just released an urban sketching zoo course where he goes to the zoo, Chester Zoo, which I love. Like, I think that was the first ever zoo I went to as a kid. I remember buying a stuffed crocodile toy. I think I still have it somewhere. Anyway, so he goes on location to Chester Zoo and he draws a bunch of animals and he does them in all different mediums and sketching processes. So he does some in pencil, he does some um, in kind of his be ink first and then paint on top. Then he does paint first and ink on top, which I found interesting because that's exactly what we're covering over on Patreon at the moment. So he really kind of starts to experiment and like shows us all his different styles, but it's still, or his different ways he uses mediums, but it's still distinctly Ian Fennelly. Like it's still his style, even though he's drawing animals, not architecture, and he's using different sketching processes. I don't know how he does it. Like, I literally just don't know how he does it, but it's still so distinctly him. So it looks really fun, guys. I haven't delved into it yet, but it just looks awesome. So do head over and check that out. I've got a link in the description below. By the way, if you can't see all the links in the description below, I think YouTube's trying out something new where you have to actually click a button to say open description, and then it opens on the right-hand side of your screen. That's if you're on a desktop, so... I don't know, they, they they can't keep anything the same, hey? They keep having to move things and change things and confuse us and whatnot. So um, yours might be normal, I don't know. Sometimes I open a video and it's the whole have to click a button and it's on the right-hand side. Sometimes it's just under the video like it is normally. Uh, so maybe it's in beta testing or something. I have no idea. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and that I delivered module two, as promised. And I actually don't hate this drawing. I know I sound surprised. 
I, I think I did an all right job at this. Uh, again, not that that's the point, but I definitely learned a lot, which definitely is the point. If you'd like to see me do module three of this course, then let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.